Hey friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to Row & Co Farms. Welcome to the Homestead Kitchen. Look what I have here today. Beautiful apples. Yesterday I had the opportunity to travel up to the North Georgia mountains to LJ. It's a beautiful area of Georgia and it's the perfect time of year for apple picking. Uh, so we went to LJ yesterday and we were able to get these two huge bags of apples. These are each a half a bushel each. Um, I do not know how much these weigh, but I'm going to guess there's at least 25 to 30 pounds of apples in each one of these. Uh, so we have a lot of apples that we're going to be processing. Um, these are locally grown, obviously. They are, they are not waxed. Um, like you see in the store, you see a lot of apples are waxed. These are not waxed. Uh, which is good. Um, we have two varieties. These are early Fuji and these are Gala. They had all kinds of varieties up there, but these are the ones that we like. We like the little bit sweeter varieties. So we're going to be freeze drying some of these today. And we're also going to make some apple butter. And then hopefully we will have enough scrap left over. We can make some vinegar. Uh, so we'll definitely be doing those three things. If we have any extras left over at the end, maybe we'll work on some applesauce or some pie filling. But I think we're going to get started with those couple of projects first and see how far we get. Uh, so we're going to be making apple butter, like I said. Uh, now, a lot of people, when they make apple butter, essentially apple butter is just cooking down your apples until they are super, super thick, like way past applesauce mode into being more of like a spread or almost like a jam even. Now, a lot of people do add spices and things to their apples like nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, uh, those types of spices. I am actually not going to be adding any of those things. I prefer them to not have it in there. My daughter is actually allergic to cinnamon and so we don't add extra cinnamon and stuff to, to those things just for that reason. So. That's just, that's just how I do it. That's definitely not the standard way to do it. So don't follow me for the recipe right now. You can follow me for maybe the technique of how to, how to cook down the apple butter. But other than that, um, I'm, I'm going to be using the standard ball blue book apple butter recipe. So yeah, follow along with that if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, let's get started on our apples. These look so good. So I'm excited to get going. So I've got my roasting pan here. I'm going to be using this to cook my apples down and I'm just going to be um, using just a standard like apple core slicer to cut these up. Just make sure your apples are clean and washed. Again, I've told you guys in previous videos, there are certain shortcuts that I tend to take with canning. And one of those is, is I don't peel the skins. And so because of what we're doing with the apples, that they're going to be kind of pureed down really, really thick. I don't mind the skins being there. They will kind of disappear by the time it's all said and done. That is up to you. If you don't like skins, peel your skins. But for me, it is a huge time consuming process. And I don't want to take the time to peel you know, 60 pounds of apples today. I want to be able to cut these, throw them into the roaster and get the process started. So if that's your kind of canning, you go ahead and do that. If it's not, make sure you peel everything first. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So make sure that you're saving your cores because we're going to make vinegar with those later. Uh, you can save your skins too. If you do peel skins, make sure that you save them. But yeah, we're going to use these to make a great apple scrap vinegar. And it's just really, really delicious. I have, um, it takes about six to eight months to make the vinegar. So um, I'm just now getting started using my vinegar from, from last year. And then this will be my batch that in a year from now, I'll be able to use um, for my next, you know, uh, vinegar batch. So I'm really excited to continue being able to make uh, fruit vinegars like that. All right. So I'm just going to continue on cutting all of these up and tossing them into my roasting pan. So I'm going to fast forward you guys for that process. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got all of our apples in here. I'm doing a double batch of the recipe. So um, it calls for five cups of sugar. That means I'm going to be adding 10 cups of sugar to this. The water is to prevent your apples from burning in the roasting pan or in your pot. Um, so because we are going to be cooking this down and evaporating off as much liquid as possible to make this into a really thick butter. Um, so yeah, the more liquid you're adding in, the longer it takes to get that liquid to evaporate away. So use caution with that. Just use um, what the recipe calls for and don't add any extra. Uh, so yeah. Let's get going. Go ahead and turn this on and let them start cooking. Okay, so now that we've got our batch of apple butter going, now I want to put some of the apples into my freeze dryer. So all I'm doing is just, again, using my apple core and slicer and making slices. Now, some people will um, cover their lemons or, or soak them in a little bit of lemon, sorry. Some people take their apples and soak them in a little bit of lemon juice or citric acid to prevent them from turning brown. Um, I have found that it doesn't really bother me. They don't turn very brown. Um, as long as I go ahead and get them into the freeze dryer right away, uh, they will turn out fine. And I've just noticed that the little bit of browning that happens just doesn't, doesn't really affect the outcome very much. Uh, my grandbabies really love to eat these and they will eat them regardless of how brown they look on the outside. They just like the way they taste. So I'm going to see if I can fill up all five of my freeze dryer trays with apples. So far, I've only got one done. I may, um, I may not do five trays of apples because I do still want to have um, some left over for some of my other projects. And I may do some just uh, regular dehydrated apples as well because I prefer, I prefer dehydrated apples over freeze dried. But my granddaughters really love the freeze dried apples over the dehydrated. So we're going to see who wins this battle. Is it them or is it me? Probably them. <laughs> All right, there's tray number two. And it looks like pretty soon I will have enough scraps to start my batch of vinegar. We may even be able to make two gallons of vinegar this year if we have enough. And that's really nice because real apple cider vinegar with the mother is very expensive. Um, I usually purchase it by the gallon and it's at least, at least $20 for a gallon. So if I can save $20 on a gallon or maybe even two, then I will be super happy with that. So here are our five trays of apples. And we're going to go put those into the freeze dryer. All right, let's make our vinegar. This is the scraps that we have so far. We have finished off one of the bags of the half bushels of apples, and this is how many cores we have. Um, if you peeled your um, if, if you peeled your apples, you can use the skins as well. But since I didn't do that, I don't need that. <laughs> so we're going to just use. Um, I have an, a one gallon jar, but use whatever size container you have that will fit your scraps in it. If you have two jars and you want to separate them into two, that's fine. Um, but basically, you're just going to add all those scraps into your jar. And then we're going to add water to that. Um, if you have filtered water, that's great. Um, if you don't have filtered water or well water and you're, and you're on like a city water that has bleach and stuff in it, you want to make sure that you um, 
let the water sit out on your counter for 24 hours and that will evaporate all of the chlorine out and that will help your fermentation process because uh, bleach will kill your bacteria and you don't want to do that. You want the bacteria to grow in here. So um, the good bacteria anyways. So yeah, we may actually have more than what we need to fill this jar. So we still have half a bowl left here. So now we're going to add water to this and then we're going to add a little bit of a starter culture. So what that means is that we're going to add a little bit of our apple scrap vinegar from last year because this already has some of those good bacteria in it and it will kind of jump start the process for these here. A lot of times when you're fermenting fruit, because it's so sweet, it can go moldy really fast. So if you can introduce a little bit of a starter culture with the mother in it. Uh, so yeah, if you're buying apple cider vinegar from the store, make sure that it says raw with the mother, um, unpasteurized. If you're getting a pasteurized apple cider vinegar, it is not a living thing. Uh, you want the one that's living. So yeah, I'm going to add, I don't know, maybe a cup give or take a cup or so of my um, of my starter culture and then we're going to add water okay so we've packed a bunch of those apples in there we filled our water up almost to the top and now what i like to do um, you want to make sure that all of your contents um, stay below the liquid level in your jar um, so because we're using a big wide mouth jar right here, um, my standard fermentation weights won't really work the same. Uh, so I like to take just a Ziploc bag, a sandwich bag, and I like to put that inside the jar here to kind of cover everything that's on the top just to keep it from floating up any further. And then I'll put my weight on top of this. And that will just ensure that none of the little food bits are touching air. We want them to be completely in, in the liquid uh, so that they don't get moldy. As soon as they touch the air, uh, they're susceptible to that mold. So there, I'm just going to use my weight there right on top. Show you guys that. So my plastic bag is in there. It's covering everything. It's keeping all of my contents below the liquid. And then we're just going to set a lid on top of there. We're not going to screw it down. We're just going to lay it on top and that will allow for gas exchange to happen. Um, I see a couple of little pieces of apple floating up here. Just little pieces. We're going to just try to pull those off. Okay. We're going to let this sit for two weeks. You're going to notice that there's all kinds of little bubbles that start to come up in here. It's going to be fizzy potentially. There may be a slight white film that forms on the top. That is normal as long as it's not mold, okay? Uh, the film is sometimes just a little bit of yeast uh, that forms. It's totally fine. It's not going to hurt you. Do not throw away your apple scrap vinegar at that point. Uh, so after the two weeks is up and you notice that all of the big bubbling action has stopped, then we're going to take out all of the pieces of apple and we're going to get rid of those and just keep the liquid that's left behind. So by the time you get rid of all the, the apples in here, this will end up being about a half a gallon of liquid that's left. And then we're going to just let that sit for about six months um, so that it'll complete its entire fermentation process and turn into that vinegar that we're used to tasting, that nice kind of sour vinegar with that little bit of bite to it. Uh, so yeah, that's all it takes to make vinegar, guys. Really, really simple. Uh, so I'll be following up with you as we continue this process, but we've got a couple weeks to wait now. So that's it. I'm going to go put my lid on. Um, anytime you're setting up a ferment, guys, you want to make sure that you label it and put a date when you started it and put a date
for the next time that you need to check it or when it's supposed to be finished uh, because you will forget <laughs> dates just get lost in your mind so just make sure that you're writing that down um, I always write it just on the outside of the jar with a sharpie and you can always um, use a little bit of alcohol later and just get that off so I find that to be the best way to label all of my mason jars is I just write on them with a marker i keep a marker in my kitchen all the time that way i can easily label everything and i don't have to worry about purchasing extra labels okay so the next thing i've decided to do whoops wasn't really on my initial agenda but i've realized that i have enough apples that i can probably go ahead and do this so i'm going to just core my apples not slice them core them with my apple core and then i'm going to slice them into apple rings and dehydrate them so let's see if we can accomplish that well okay well that broke that one <laughs> I'm not an expert there we go okay so there we have our apple slice there and then i'm just going to take them and cut them into really thin rings Okay, so I've made up a little batch of, this is just water with some lemon juice in it. And I'm just going to make sure that all the apples get a little bit of a soaking in that. And that'll help them from turning brown. Um, it, it doesn't bother me with the freeze dried apples as much, but with the dehydrated apples, they just, they just look better if they're not all brown. And since the the dehydrated apples are being exposed to some heat in the dehydrator it'll definitely make them turn even darker than it will in the freeze dryer so, so yeah we're just making sure that they're all coated and we'll place them in there all right got six trays of apples for drying let's go put them on our dehydrator So our apple butter has been cooking down for quite a while now, several hours, and the apples are definitely getting really, really soft. But there's still a lot of liquid in here. I'm gonna continue to let some of this water cook down because I know <laughs> that I'm gonna need some of that to be gone. Okay, so while that continues to go, um, I have started, and I'm going to keep doing it, I've started coring and peeling this time apples for apple pie filling. Um, I realize that I have so many apples uh, that I have enough to do that as well. So yeah, let's work on that. So I have a apple peeler and corer that I'm using. Not all of the peelers that you find out there will have the uh, coring option so you have to check on that when you get one um, but this makes it really handy so you just kind of push your apple on there you start turning it and then it starts to slice it with this blade and then it goes through this little hole here and it um, yeah it's it I'll show you <laughs> it's really cool just go all the way through so the skin is gone now the core comes out and it's sliced into this like spiral so all i do now is just take that spiral and chop it down the middle and that creates just some really good slices for apple pie filling so whoops i dropped one that's okay uh, so that's what we're going to use for our apple pie and then we'll continue to add in our cores and 
scrap peels, and we'll make another gallon of apple cider vinegar. Okay, so the next step, we have cut all of our apples up. They have been soaked in lemon juice. I have a pot of water that is boiling here or about to boil, and we are gonna be blanching the apples. Um, originally, I was like, why do you blanch, blanch the apples? But apples, when you cook them, tend to swell up a little bit and they puff up. So because of that, we want them to puff up before we put them in the jars, so that way, we know how much space they're going to take up. And then also our clear gel mix that we put in will also puff up a little bit when it goes into the, after it cooks through the uh, canning process. So we just wanna make sure that the apples puff up before. So um, I've got my water boiling for that. And then I'm going to, in my other pot over here, we're gonna start mixing up our uh, pie filling, the, the mixture with the clear gel, the sugar, and any spices that you want to add at that point. So I'm going to gather those things and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so this is clear gel. This is the only approved thickener that can go into canning recipes. Um, you, you can't add flour. I don't think you can add cornstarch or any of those. So yeah, this is the only one I know of that you can add so to make the pie filling, you add the clear gel, some apple juice, your spices, sugar, lemon juice, and you get all that combined together and you cook it until it gets really, really thick. So we're just cooking this liquid until it gets really thick, just like we like you would imagine a pie filling would be. And then we will kind of do a little dance here. We will add the apples into the boiling water, let them blanch for about 30 seconds, and then we're going to put them into our pie filling mixture and get all that stirred up. So hopefully we will be able to do that in a reasonable <laughs> manner. Um, I'm not sure this is the first time I've ever made pie filling, so um, I'm sure I'll get it a little bit of it wrong but I'm trying. Okay, so you can see now how thick this mixture has gotten. So now we can start putting apples in there. Wow, that is some thick stuff. Okay, let's try adding these. Let's try stirring this in. Okay, that's not too bad. That's some, that's some really thick stuff right there. Wow. And my apples are definitely not all going to fit in here, so I hope I can work that out. <laughs> Okay guys, I actually went and swapped out the pot because there was just no good way for me to accomplish coating all of the apples with the gel in another pot, trying to change it over, that just wasn't gonna work. So I moved everything into here and now I'm gonna finish blanching the rest of these apples so I can get those in here as well. So yeah, we're almost there guys. We are almost there. This is like the messiest part of all of it. So let's see if we can see if we can do it. Okay, let's try to label this stuff again. Oh, goodness. They say that you get a lot of bubbles with this, so you really have to debubble quite a bit. So take your time doing that. 
A lot of recipes say you should leave one inch headspace, but several of the people that I have been watching on YouTube said that you should let your apple mixture stop right here where the jar starts to kind of curve up a little bit and that will allow for some of the expansion of the apples and the mixture. So that's what I'm going to do to see if that works because otherwise sometimes they say it can fill so much that it can kind of blow the lid off your jar and so I don't want that to happen. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure that we don't do that. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna use a chopstick Poke everything down here. Uh, you can see that I just kind of stopped right here where it starts to curve and I'm hoping that's going to work out. Um, it looks like I still have some air bubbles in there. We just really want to try to work all that out. Okay, so I got eight quarts of the apple pie filling and those are just now going into the water bath canner and we need to get it up to boiling and then we'll start our time, which is 25 minutes. So we'll be processing these for 25 minutes. So you can definitely see that the apples definitely expanded into the upper part of the jar. So I'm really glad that we did keep our head space a little bit bigger than what we had initially planned for. But that looks really good. So we've got eight quarts of apple pie filling. We're gonna just leave this sitting here until tomorrow so everything can cool off really well and then we'll label it all and put it on the pantry shelf. Okay, so we've gotten to a good point here with our apples. A lot of the liquid has cooked off. There is still some in here, but I think we are good to kind of blend this up together and see what kind of consistency we have. So I'm just using my immersion blender. I'll just go in here and okay so we've got that a lot of it pureed down there's still some chunks in there that's okay so this is definitely this is applesauce consistency right now we want this to be thicker so we're just going to let this keep cooking down um, and we'll just keep observing it. You see how it's steaming a whole lot, so a lot of liquid is coming off of here. We just want to be um, careful that we don't burn it. I'm going to turn it down a good bit, and we'll just watch it over the next couple of hours. And then as soon as it's ready, we will put it into our water bath canner. So I'm processing my apple butter in half pint jars. It probably could have gotten a little bit thicker than this, but it's still going to be really delicious. It's like a really thick, thick applesauce. So guys, it's the next day and we were able to complete all of our apple projects. As you can see right here, we have three gallon jars of apple scrap vinegar that have started. So it'll be six months before we have vinegar done, but that's okay. We're going to have some vinegar. So that's great news. We have our apple butter, which I guess technically is really just thick, thick applesauce. 
uh, because I did not add any of the spices to it. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, one of my daughters is allergic to cinnamon and I feel like apple butter without the cinnamon just isn't quite the same. And so I didn't want to add all of the other spices without the cinnamon because I think it just, it loses something. I don't really love nutmeg and I definitely don't like cloves. And so <laughs> I feel like if you don't have the cinnamon in there, you just kind of lose part of it. So essentially my apple butter is just a really, really thick applesauce that is spreadable. It's still going to be really delicious though. Um, we can always add some cinnamon to it later if we want to do that but I wanted to make sure that my daughter was able to take some of this with her to school and didn't have to worry about there being cinnamon in there because it's really hard to find apple butter with no cinnamon in it. So I'd venture to say you can't find it <laughs> except for right here. Um, okay, so that, and then we also have our apple pie filling, which I put away already. Right here in the pantry. It's looking really good. I got a nice spot for it there. I just did these um, yesterday too. I didn't do a video on it because I want to taste them first, but these are balsamic maple Brussels sprouts. I got that recipe from that 1870s homestead. Those are going to be so good, I think. I want to make sure they're good, but yeah, as long as they're, they turn out well, I will bring a video on that too. Uh, but I will link her video down below if you guys want to check hers out. So yeah, all of the apples. Oh, I didn't even show you the, the dehydrated ones. They are still in the dehydrator. Back into the pantry. So right here in the dehydrator, I do need to take those out. Uh, it is done. And then the freeze dryer, it is still running currently. So it'll take uh, at least 10 more hours or so before those are finished. Yeah, I'm super, super stoked about the different ways that we have preserved those apples. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this content, please hit that subscribe button. I'm going to link a couple videos up here that I think you'll enjoy, and I can't wait to see you guys next time here at Rowan Co. Farms.